Bismillah Rahman Rahim. This is the second video on drilling and development cost under successful efforts method. And we will talk about development drilling, stratigraphic test wells, special drilling operations and problems, additional development cost, support equipment and facilities, post balance sheet events, and interest capitalization. But in the beginning of this session, I would like to thank my son, Muhammad Abdullah Khan, who gifted me an iPad along with all the necessary accessories without which making these videos would not have been possible. I would like to thank Nabiya Khan for helping me out in preparing these awesome slides. I would like to thank my wife Samina for her care, encouragement and constant support who allowed me to use time for her in making this video. Drilling additional development wells is necessary to produce the reservoir at a satisfactory rate. Development wells may not significantly increase the total amount of oil and gas. However, the additional wells do increase the rate of recovery. Development cost shall be capitalized as part of the cost of an enterprise wells and related equipment and facilities, whether the well is successful or unsuccessful. Cost of drilling those wells and cost of constructing equipment and facilities shall be included in the enterprise uncompleted wells, equipment and facilities until drilling or construction is completed. Most of the entries in development drilling are same as exploratory drilling except the reclassification to proved property. Let us look into an illustration on development drilling cost. During 2006 and 2007, Lucky Company drilled several successful exploratory wells on Lease A. As a result, Lease A was classified as a proved property and the estimated boundaries of the reservoir were delineated. Lucky Company decided in 2008 to drill an additional well within the proved area, a development well, and hired a drilling contractor under a turnkey contract. The drilling contract specified that the contractor was to perform all services and furnish all materials up to completion. The well is drilled and equipped to the point of completion and Lucky Company pays the contractor under a turnkey contract the agreed amount of 150,000. Of this 150,000, intangible drilling cost was 120,000 and equipment cost were 30,000. So intangible drilling cost and lease and well equipment are debit and cash is credit. Assume the well was determined to be dry and plugged and abandoned for an additional 2000 and again this cost will be capitalized as well in progress intangible drilling cost debit and cash is credit and then we are going to close the well in progress account and you can see well in progress has a debit balance of 120 and 2000 so it is credited by 122 and uh, lease and well equipment has a debit balance of 30000 and this has been credited by 30000 as well and we will debit wells and related equipment and facilities in tangible drilling cost and lease and well equipment now assume instead that the well was successful and that additional intangible drilling cost of 150 or 15000 
and equipment cost of 70,000 were incurred. So well in progress intangible drilling cost is debited by 1 by 15 and wells in progress lease and well equipment is debited by 70 and cash is credited by 85. Now we are going to close the well in progress intangible drilling cost and lease and well equipment. Now you can see that we have the well in progress uh, 120 plus 15 that makes 135 and 30 plus 70 that makes 100. We will intentionally ignore this 2000 because this was in a situation when the well was dry. So wells and related equipment and facility are debit and lease and well equipment is debited by 100,000. Stratigraphic test wells are drilled without the intention of being completed for hydrocarbon production. A drilling effort geologically directed to obtain information pertaining to a specific geological condition. Stratigraphic test wells are classified as exploratory type if not drilled in a proved area or development type if drilled in a proved area. Stratigraphic test wells can be exploratory type or development type test wells. The rules for capitalizing or expensing cost of exploratory type and development type stratigraphic test wells are the same as the rules for capitalizing or expensing the cost of exploratory and development wells. Capitalization is not dependent upon whether the well will be completed as a producer, but upon whether the well has either found proved reserve or is a development well. Thus, in case of dry exploratory type stratigraphic test wells, costs are expensed, while in case of successfully exploratory type stratigraphic test wells, cost is capitalized. While all development type stratigraphic test wells, whether dry or successful, are capitalized. Workover cost can be classified as development or exploratory cost. Such operations help to stimulate production from a particular well. This may be necessary because fluid flow is reduced or completely stopped as tubing is clogged. A workover may also be necessary when the casing has been perforated and rock or sand particles have clogged the openings in the case. These types of workover cost are expensed as production expense because production has been restored. There may be operation whose objective is to add new proved reserves accounted as new exploratory or development drilling. For example, a well was producing at 8,000 feet but plugged back to 5,000 feet where there was a produ producing formation and completed in that zone. Or a well might be re-entered and deepened below the casing point in the attempt to obtain production from a deeper horizon. Such cost will be treated as drilling cost and capitalized as the purpose of the workovers is to obtain production from a new formation and not merely to restore production from a formation already producing. Let us look into an example on workover. Lucky Company has the following expenditure during July on 7-10-2007 workover cost in connection with well number 1036 cleaning and re-acidizing producing formation 5000. 
Now in this case, the work over is to stimulate or restore production from a particular well. So it will be expensed as a production expense. So lease operating expense is debit. Lease number is 1036 and cash is credit. In the second transaction, work over cost on well number 1097, testing, perforating and completion at 8000 feet. This depth is a new producing formation. Now, in the second case, the cost is treated as drilling cost because the purpose of the work over was to obtain production from a new formation not merely to restore production from a formation already producing. That's why it is capitalized as well in progress intangible drilling cost debit and well in progress lease and well equipment debit by 2000. So 20,000 plus 2000 makes 20,000. And then we are going to close the uh, well in progress and uh, intangible drilling cost and uh, well in progress lease and well equipment cost by debiting wells and related equipment and facility intangible drilling cost and lease and well equipment in the third case work over completed in deepening well deepening the well to a new unproved formation at 9,000 feet, result was a dry hole at that depth. Lucky continued producing from the formation at 5,000 feet. In the third case, the drilling will qualify as new development drilling, although to a new unproved formation. As it is an operation, whose objective is to add new proved reserves and hence it is going to be capitalized again although it resulted in a dry hole. So well in progress intangible drilling cost is debit and wells in progress lease and well equipment is credit and then again you can see that the two accounts has been closed by debiting dry hole expense intangible drilling cost and dry hole expense lease and well equipment by 5000 so you can see the difference when we if it is a dry hole this is how we make a journal entry and if it is a, not a dry hole the journal entry will be made like this next uh, we talk about drilling and uh, additional development cost so drilling development cost includes only those costs that are directly related to drilling. All such costs should be capitalized as wells and related equipment and facilities. Development costs are defined as those costs incurred to obtain access to proved reserves and to provide facilities for extracting, treating, gathering and storing the oil and gas. It also includes cost of support equipment and facilities that helps to gain access to and prepare well locations for drilling that includes cost of clearing the ground, draining, road building and relocate, relocating uh, public road etc. Drills and equipment development wells that include cost of platforms, casing, pumping etc acquire contract constr acquire construct and install production facilities such as lease flow lines separators waste disposal systems etc provide improved recovery systems it also includes service wells that are drilled to support production in an existing field like gas injection, water injection wells, etc. Likewise, cost associated with secondary and tertiary recovery methods like improved recovery systems are also considered to be development cost. Please note 
that since these are development cost so they will be capitalized we can look into an, an illustration during 2006 and 2007 lucky company drilled lucky oil company began installing flow lines the flow lines cost 10000 and installation cost charges are 2000 so since the cost has to be capitalized and this is an equipment so well in progress lease and well equipment is debit 12000 10 plus 2 and cash is credit installation of the flow lines was completed late in july so once it is completed the well in progress account is credited now and wells and related equipment and facilities lease and well equipment is debit now operating cost or depreciation related to support equipment and facilities used in exploration development or production activities should be classified as an exploration development or production cost as appropriate so we can look into the depreciation on the automobile used by the drilling foreman total 5000 during the year since the automobile is used to support the drilling of several wells the depreciation must be allocated between all of the wells being drilled during the period using a mileage driven basis 1000 of the depreciation is allocated to well number one and the entry is well in progress intangible drilling cost debit and accumulated depreciation is credit next we come to g and g cost to select drill site now geological and geophysical cost incurred to determine a specific drill site are considered to be part of the cost of drilling a well and are initially recorded as well in progress intangible drilling cost if the well is a development well the g and g cost will ultimately be recorded as wells and related what we call as e equipment and facilities so wells and related uh, equipment and facilities if the well is an exploratory well the g and g cost will ultimately be recorded either as wells and related equipment and facility or dry hole expense depending upon whether the well finds proved reserves or not the GNG costs incurred to determine a specific drill site are not considered non-drilling GNG cost, which should be expensed as incurred. Coming to the post balance events, post balance sheet events related to information about conditions that existed at balance sheet date and that become known after the end of the period but before the financial statements are issued drilling of an exploratory well over a fiscal year end is an example of a potential post balance sheet event please note the cost associated with drilling and exploratory wells are capitalized as wells in progress until it is determined whether the well has found proved reserves or not if the well is dry the capitalized costs are charged to expense. If the well is successful, the capitalized costs are reclassified as wells and related equipment and facilities. Normally, all the cost of an exploratory dry hole must be written off in the year a well is determined to be dry. However, if a well is determined to be dry after year end, but before the financial statement are issued, the cost incurred prior to year end should be written off in that fiscal year. Any cost incurred in the second year relating to the well should be charged to the expense in the second year. Let us look into an example. 
Lucky Company incurred the following drilling cost on well number 1 prior to December 31, 2005. We have intangible drilling cost and equipment cost of 20,000. Uh, this is in the year 2005. Then during the year uh, 2006, the intangible drilling cost is 30,000. The well was determined to be dry on February 1. Before the financial statement were published, no equipment was salvaged. So the intangible drilling cost of 235,000 and equipment cost of 20,000 should be expensed as dry hole cost for the year ended December 31, 2005. The 30,000 of intangible drilling cost that were incurred in the year 2006 should be incur should be expensed in the year 2006. Next we come to interest capitalization. The cost of assets that require a period of time to be prepared for the intended use must capitalize interest uh, must uh, capitalize interest all qualifications qualifying assets defined as assets constructed by an entity of its own use for its own use rather for must be must capitalize interest to obtain the amount of interest to capitalize each period the interest rate is applied to the average amount of accumulated capital expenditure capitalized interest cannot exceed actual interest cost the interest capitalization period begins when the three following conditions are met expenditure for the asset have been made activity is necessary to get the asset ready for its intended use are in progress and interest cost is being incurred the term activities used in condition 2 above is to be construed broadly encompassing technical and administrative activities such as obtaining permits. The interest capitalization period should end when the asset is substantially complete and ready for productive purpose. The formula that we are going, we are going to use is average accumulated expenditure during construction times interest rate times construction period let us look into an example lucky company has unproved property cost of 60000 for lease at january 1 2007 during the year 2007 drilling costs are incurred on lease a in the amount of 360 so the average accumulated cost will be 60,000 plus 360,000 divided by 2 that will be give you 210,000 times interest rate that is 10 percent and construction period is 12 months so this will be equal to 21,000 so wells in progress intangible drilling cost is debit and interest expense is credited by 21,000 so this completes the second part on drilling and development cost under successful efforts method remember effective questioning brings insight which fuels curiosity which cultivates wisdom if you have any question regarding this session, then please don't hesitate to ask in the comment box or by email and inshallah, I will reply you back. Happy learning.